Bacteria have inhabited the Earth for at least two and a half billion years. Research shows that our evolutionary ancestors arrived in a world dominated by microbes and that the relationship between humans and the bacteria in our guts extends back to the time before modern humans even existed. Microbes in two bacterial families, Bacterioidaceae and Bifidobacteria arceae, which are present in humans and African apes, likely colonise the guts of a shared ancestor of both groups around 15 million years ago. A diverse range of beneficial gut microbes is essential for a healthy mind and body. Evidence is growing that our modern diet, overuse of antibiotics and obsession with cleanliness are damaging the microbes that live in our gut. This collection of microorganisms collectively known as our gut microbiota, is a complex ecosystem which, to be strong, healthy and resilient, thrives like all ecosystems on diversity. The Hadza of Tanzania eat a forage diet of roots, berries and game. Mounting evidence suggests that their guts are home to a microbial community unlike anything found in a modern human population, providing an insight into what the human gut microbiome might have looked like when our food was foraged rather than farmed. According to scientists, the Hadza have the most diverse gut bacteria of anyone anywhere in the world. This diversity seems to be the reason the Hadza are in such good health noticeably lacking common Western diseases. Both diet and the environment affects the Hadza's remarkable gut microbiota, and whilst it is not possible for us in the Western world to emulate their lifestyle, time spent with the Hadza's has further demonstrated the connection between diet, the environment, and gut microbiota. There are trillions of bacteria from thousands of different species that can reside in your gastrointestinal tract. These organisms, along with their collective genetic material, which is vast, far greater than the genes encoded in the human genome, is known as the microbiome. And it is individual to you, much like a fingerprint. One third of our gut microbiota is common to most people while two-thirds are specific to each one of us and is a reflection of who your parents were, where you've been, your age, who you spend intimate time with, what you eat, how you live, whether or not you put your hands in soil and grow vegetables, and much, much more. Diversity of microbial species is determined from birth. The mode of delivery can have a really profound effect on the gut bacteria. As a baby passes through the birth canal, bacterial microorganisms are picked up from the vaginal wall and enter into the baby through the mouth. If a baby is delivered by C-section, then the first microorganisms will be different as they will have been picked up from the skin of the mother and others in the delivery room. Mother's milk and formula also have a different effect on the gut microbes. Mother's milk contains just the right ingredients to nourish the beneficial bacteria and encourage their growth in the intestines. The next stage is when the baby begins to crawl and play in the dirt, putting his hands in his mouth, enabling soil-based organisms to help colonise the intestines. By the time the youngster is three, the bacteria in the gut will be fully matured. Bacteria colonise the entire gastrointestinal tract, from the lips all the way down to the anus. Due to the hydrochloric acid in the stomach, there is a very low population of microbes. The duodenum and the rest of the small intestine have a quite rich population of microbes, which should be dominated by lactobacilli. This is where the absorption of food mostly happens. The large intestine or colon is where a vast population of microbes reside. The bacteria in the colon play an intricate role on virtually every system of the body. Gut bacteria produce hundreds of neurochemicals that the brain uses to regulate basic physiological processes as well as mental processes such as learning, memory and mood. For example, gut bacteria manufacture about 95% of the body's supply of serotonin, which influences mood. In addition, research has linked conditions such as 
autism, depression and anxiety to the gut's microbial residence. Because the majority of the immune system is located in your gut, beneficial bacteria help support the body's natural defences. Bacteria synthesise certain B vitamins, notably biotin, required for normal cellular function, growth and development, as well as vitamin K, which is essential for blood clotting. Gut bacteria produce butyrate, which can help improve brain health and is a potent anti-inflammatory. Gut bacteria regulate our glucose levels and metabolism and protect us against disease-causing microbes. Gut bacteria have also been linked to obesity. Research has shown that lean people have many more species of intestinal bacteria than obese people. Agricultural pesticides and herbicides, along with industrially farmed meat, can derail your gut bacteria. You can be sure to avoid all of these by choosing organic food. Refined and highly processed food will upset the balance of your gut bacteria. An experiment with a student only eating fast food for 10 days showed about 40% of his bacteria species were lost which amounted to about 1,400 different types. Loss of microbial diversity, such as this, has been linked to diabetes and obesity. Additives in processed foods are also detrimental to gut microbes. A high sugar diet can adversely affect the gut bacteria. The altered balance, for example, can affect both short and long-term memory. Antibacterial soaps, sanitizers and wipes limit the vital evolutionary relationship with the microorganisms in our environment. Stress can be a big factor in overall gut health, so anything you can do to minimise excessive stress in your life will be beneficial. Antibiotics can be life-saving. However, if there is a choice, err on the side of caution as they wreak havoc on the beneficial gut microbiota. Caesareans can save lives, but if you have a choice, choose a natural birth and be sure to breastfeed for six months or longer to optimise your baby's microbiome. You can check out the resources link at the end of this video for more detailed information about what to avoid. So what are the foods to include in your diet to encourage a healthy gut microbiota? The key to this is diversity. Include in your diet a wide range of colourful plant-based foods, green leafy vegetables and legumes. Also try to forage some wild foods. In the spring include nettles and wild garlic and in the autumn, berries. What is the importance of legumes and vegetables? They provide fibre for the bacteria that are beneficial in your gut to thrive. There are two groups of foods that are particularly beneficial. That is foods that provide prebiotics and foods that provide probiotics. The prebiotic provides food to nourish the good bacteria in the gut and enable them to multiply, whereas a probiotic implants bacteria that are beneficial. Both are good. Let's look at the prebiotic. That includes foods like onions, artichokes, leeks, garlic, chicory and asparagus. Beneficial probiotic foods include the lacto-fermented vegetables like sauerkraut and kimchi, along with the lacto-fermented dairy products like kefir and yogurt. Another group of foods that are really beneficial to the gut bacteria are polyphenols. Polyphenols are a kind of phytonutrient, um, a particularly important compound that can be found in grapes, 
in raw cacao, in onions, and also in seaweeds and linseed. If you want some of my inspiring recipes, check them out on the Green Cuisine Trust website. My friend Joanna Magithia is a registered nutritional therapist and experienced in functional stool analysis. How are you? Her knowledge and expertise makes her an ideal person to explain the process of stool analysis. I use stool analysis in my clinic as I find it to be a really useful and non-invasive way to assess the gastrointestinal health for my patients. The gut microbiome, which is the collective term for all the bacteria and um, microorganisms in our gut, has a huge influence on our overall health, including making vitamins for us, helping us digest our food, playing a key role in um, our immune system, um, being able to modulate our mood and nervous system, as well as um, for immune health. Recent advances in molecular DNA detection techniques have meant that it's possible now to find out much more about the gut microbiome. So being able to do this DNA sequencing technology means that we can identify a huge array of species that were previously unknown. And the science and research into this area is growing exponentially all the time. So I think in the next five to 10 years, we're going to have um, absolutely amazing amounts of information in this area. So taking a sample for stool analysis is actually really simple. You get sent a kit from the laboratory so you can take the sample in the privacy of your own home. You just need to take a, a, a small sample from a daily bowel movement that goes into a collection tube and it gets sent back to the la laboratory where it's um, analysed. The laboratory then would send through the results and they get interpreted like, uh, by someone like myself. So if this was a patient in my clinic, I would write them a report and that would explain the findings of the test and also, more importantly, what to do about it so that we can uh, start to address and improve your digestive health or overall health depending on, on what condition we're looking at. Just shifting away from foods and a lifestyle that are detrimental to gut bacteria and incorporating a wider range of natural foods can often be all that's needed to encourage a greater gut biodiversity.